One meal a day fasting is an incredible tool that you can utilize in order to transform your health. It's a tool that I've used personally for many years in order to help promote longevity, boost growth hormone, keep me at a good healthy weight, along with doing things like lowering my insulin levels and keeping my cholesterol and my blood pressure balanced. It has so many benefits that it will offer you. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to practice one meal a day, and of course, the foods that you should eat when following one meal a day as well. But before we get started, I'm Dr. Nick Sorowski, and if you haven't done so yet, make your way on over to Locals and join my health club community. Over in Health Club, we're having conversations that arm you with the proper information that you need in order to improve your health every day naturally. Currently, we're having conversations on how you can use your genetic profile in order to shape your nutrition, and of course, prevent disease, identifying the different conditions that you're predisposed to genetically so that you can start fighting against them today so that they'll never become your reality. Now go ahead and click in the link in the description below and join Health Club today. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. And we're gonna talk about fasting, intermittent fasting in the form of one meal a day. Now the fasting hours that you're going to follow when doing one meal a day is going to be 22 hours of fasting in two hour eating window. Now you might ask yourself, well, okay, if I'm just eating one meal, do I really need two hours? I like to leave that two hour window for a few reasons. One, because it gives you plenty of time to consume your food, chew it properly so that you don't have a whole bunch of indigestion. Because it's one of the big questions I get, how in the world can you actually eat all the food you're supposed to eat in just one meal? Well, you're doing it over the course of two hours. You'll have plenty of time. Now, the other thing that I wanna make sure that we understand here right off the bat is that one meal a day is not some sort of starving technique. It is a fasting technique and whenever fasting, what you're trying to always do when intermittent fasting is get the normal calories that you would consume any day of the week, but just in a shorter period of time. So you have that big, long period of time where your body can heal. It boosts growth hormone. You promote autophagy. You promote stem cells in the body. You promote so much good healing in the body during that fasted period. And then you have the meal within that two hour window and you focus on getting plenty of protein and calories and good fats and vegetables and all the things that you need. Now, those are the fasting hours, 22 and two, 22 hours fasted, two hour eating window. Now let's go and talk about hunger because whenever you start intermittent fasting, you're gonna notice that you'll have a little bit more hunger in the very beginning. Now your body does adapt to this very well. People who've done one meal a day fasting for many years, they don't even have this as an issue, but I'm telling you initially you might. So you'll have some hunger issues in the, in, in the beginning, but what you can do in order to counteract that is very easy. First of all, black coffee is really good at blunting hunger. Using things like sparkling mineral water is really good. And the reason I like to use this mineral water is simply because it will have those electrolytes in it, which is very good for you. You can utilize things like green tea and even apple cider vinegar as well. And all of these things are good at blunting hunger so that you can maintain that fast for that 22 hour period. But once again, the more you do this, the more adapted your body will become, and this will ultimately become second nature to you. Now, the big question too is, do I need to do this every single day? And I don't think you do need to follow one meal a day every day. Some people do, and some people have successfully followed one meal a day for 10, 15 years, and they love it. I've personally used one meal a day for long periods of time, and I had no issue with it. But what I do recommend is that you're always changing up your fasting hours. And so I like to do 16 and eight intermittent fasting, a little bit of one meal a day intermittent fasting. Sometimes I'll just do a 24 hour fast, a three day fast. So I switch it up all the time. And then of course there's times when I'm not fasting at all. And what I call this is metabolic flexibility. When you change your fasting hours all the time, you're constantly creating this metabolic confusion. And as a result, your body's always adapting. And what we find just like with exercise, when you're constantly changing your exercise, you're forcing your body to adapt, your body becomes stronger. When you're changing your fasting time frames constantly throughout the week, you're gonna find that your body has to always adapt and ultimately this supports your metabolic system. So you don't have to do it every day. I mean, typically two, three days a week is really good. Now, the quick question too is, do I exercise when I'm doing one meal a day? Well, there's a few ways to think about this. For one, what I like to do is I like to do weight training on the days that I'm doing one meal a day simply because if I'm doing long distance cardio, it's very hard to maintain that one meal a day and also exercise at that level. So I try 
try to schedule my weight training on the days that I'm doing one meal a day. Now, the other thing that I like to do is I like to weight train when I'm in the fasted state. There's tons of benefits around this. When you exercise in the fasted state, what you're gonna find is you're gonna get a bigger testosterone boost, a bigger growth hormone boost, and you're going to be in a fat burning state. So you're going to actually burn more fat during this time as well. So I think that's greatly beneficial, but exercising is completely fine. You may just wanna change up what type of exercises that you're doing. Like I said, high intensity cardio can be a struggle. It can drive a lot of hunger and it does doesn't really go well with one meal a day, whereas more weight training that has less intensity and just focusing on that strength is easier to do personally for me. Now, what to eat and when to eat. So what to eat is very important because when you're eating your meals in this short period of time, it's very, very important to make sure that you're focusing on high quality nutrition. You shouldn't be eating a whole bunch of sugar and carbs and non-nutritious foods. You want to make sure you're getting like the most nutrient dense foods during this time. You're only eating during that short window of time your food should be good. So what to eat? You want to really focus on good quality proteins. That's very important is making, making sure that you're getting plenty of protein. Most people lack protein in their diet. And when you do this, it makes the fasting portion a huge struggle, okay? And this is why what to eat is so important is because what you're eating during that feeding window will ultimately determine how you feel during the fasting window. So when you're eating, you have to get plenty of protein and plenty of fats in. If you don't get this in, you're going to find that your body feels like it's starving. So make sure you're putting a big focus and emphasis on that. And then lots of fruits and leafy greens is really good too. If you get the greens in, you get the fruits in, you're getting lots of vitamins and minerals, and it's a good whole food, well-rounded diet that ultimately we want to stick to. Now, when to eat? And what I mean by this is, do you eat your one meal in the morning, in the afternoon, or at night? Well, I'll tell you what I do, and I I'll tell you also what ultimately works best for most people, and that is eating that one meal at night. There's a reason for this, because when you eat that big meal at night, it actually signals to your nervous system to go into more of a rest and relaxation state. This is what you want at night in order to help you sleep. And also putting those calories at night will help you sleep as well. When you put the proteins in and some carbs and you put some different uh, vitamins and minerals and nutrients in at this time, it will promote good quality sleep. So that is when I like to have my one meal is at nighttime in the evening in order to actually help me sleep better throughout the night. And the better you sleep, of course, the better you feel the next day. Now, the next thing is when do you take vitamins and also what kind of vitamins should you take? So I like to follow the same vitamins that I would take just for general health. And what this really looks like is going to be a multivitamin, okay? I like taking a multivitamin every day simply because there are so many different nutrients that people lack in their diet every day, including myself. The soil is so so deficient of nutrients, which makes a lot of our fruits and vegetables deficient of nutrients compared to what they used to be. So therefore, I take a multivitamin every day. It's just a broad spectrum multivitamin. I'll put links to all resources to vitamins I mentioned here in this video in the description below, but I take a multivitamin in order to make sure that I'm not falling into deficiencies in the B vitamins and vitamin A, vitamin C, all the things, and of course, minerals as well. So a multivitamin is what I would totally recommend here. Now, the next thing I like to do is take a probiotic and I like to take a good fish oil, okay? Probiotic is gonna support a healthy gut and then the fish oil is gonna support, you know, brain health, nervous system health, all of that. So those are very general uh, nutritional supports that I would recommend for anybody, but also for somebody who's doing one meal a day. Now, when taking your vitamins, take them when you eat. Don't try to take them on an empty stomach. It's going to make you feel sick. So therefore, move those vitamins to your feeding window, and that's what's going to serve you best. So this is in a nutshell, how I'm doing one meal a day. And this is how I've done it for years. This is very transformational. Anybody who starts doing this will start to see their health improve. And if you know the 22 hours is something that seems a little bit of a struggle for you, start with you know a 12 hour fast, move to a 16 hour fast, then an 18 hour fast and 20, work your way up. And if at any time your body signals to you like, hey, look, that 22 hours is just too much. We feel really comfortable at that 18 hour mark, then do that. Don't 
push yourself to, you know, get to that 22 hours if your body absolutely says no. You know, based on your current state of health and your hormones and so many other variables, your body may struggle to get to that 22 hour mark. If you can do that 22 hours, that's great. But if you can't, just work as close as you can to it and be happy with that. I'm Dr. Nick Zorowski. Give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. It was a pleasure seeing you in this video. I look forward to seeing you in this video next.